It's Becky Bamboo. It's Friday. It's Friday. It is Friday, May 20th, 2011. Um, I look a hot mess because I just got done working out in the yard. Mowed the grass, weed whipped, swept up the patio. Yeah, exciting stuff. Actually, it is kind of exciting because there was a time where doing what I did this morning would have like totally killed me for the entire rest of the day. Um, so it's kind of fun now to to go out and work in the yard because it's there's something rewarding about it and it feels so good to be able to just be outside and it's warm and I'm not dying. <laughs> it's so nice. So forgive the way I look. I, I just literally just got inside and I decided I've got a busy day so I'm going to go ahead and do my Friday video and uh, get it out of the way. Um, so, I don't think I did a video yesterday. Did I? I don't think I did. Um, I was going to because someone asked me a question on one of my last videos about um, post-operative pain um, in terms of uh, RNY gastric bypass. So, I thought um, today I would just touch on that and talk a little bit about what my experience was like um, immediately post-op and hopefully that will give you guys I don't know, you pre-oppers, maybe it'll give you something to go by. Um, the one thing I want to say is, obviously, pain is different for all of us. So, um, what I experienced, I can't tell you that you're going to experience the same thing or worse or better. It'll just depend on how your body reacts to it. Um, I, for one, had never had surgery um, prior to my gastric bypass, so I had no idea going in what this was going to be like. I had no idea what it was going to feel like what kind of pain that was going to be and it's not really anything you can explain to anyone um, because like I said it's different for all of us so uh, my experience was um, that anyway that let me just explain that this person's comment said that they have a friend that's a recovery room nurse and says that um, RNY gastric bypass is really painful for most people so um, I think it made her really scared of how much is this going to hurt um, I will say, I do remember waking up in the recovery room. Um, I remember the nurse asking me to raise my hand and hold it up. I remember hearing people talking. I remember her saying something about, yeah, she keeps saying she's nauseous and in pain and she's had about everything she can have. Um, and that's about it. Uh, I do remember waking up feeling soreness in my belly, but not like excruciating pain. Um, the the biggest thing I had was dizziness and nausea. I was so dizzy, it was insane. Um, and the dizziness was making me feel so sick to my stomach that I was more focused on that than I was the actual pain. Um, I was hooked up to a PCA pain pump with morphine and I'm sure I had had lots of other doses of morphine. Um, and I also had an on cue pain ball. Uh, some of you may not know what that is. I actually still have mine. I should show it to you on video sometime. Um, it's like a little ball and it has two little catheters that come out of it. And um, those catheters, the doctor will kind of like tunnel underneath your skin and it just like rains down um, like a numbing medication over your abdominal wall. I don't know if it helped or not. Maybe it did. I, I mean, I had no basis of comparison for that. So, um, regardless, I had it. And the on -cue pain ball, you actually go home with and you take it out yourself. You, you pull the catheters out and like you can feel them coming out from like inside your skin. It's the weirdest feeling. It doesn't hurt. It's just like kind of like an odd feeling. Um, so I, I had that. Uh, when I got to I do remember going from recovery to my room. I remember that bed ride and I was so dizzy and like all the movement, it was making me so sick to my stomach. Um, so I remember that, but I can't say I remember like it hurting when they were moving me. I was just dizzy and feeling like I needed to puke. Um, let's see, when I got to my room, um, you know, they do your frequent vital checks and all that. and. Um, Apparently, I woke up very irritated <laughs> because uh, I must have, like, cursed out the blood pressure machine that they left in the room because it kept beeping. So I told it off, <laughs> apparently. I don't remember this. Um, uh, they kept telling me to use my morphine pump, 
but every time I'd push it, it wouldn't work. And I eventually found out that it was like, you just had to like jam down as hard as you could to get it to finally go. And um, so I had complained about that several times, but I wasn't really using it because what I discovered, I mean, I, fi I figured this out really quickly and I don't know if it's just because um, I was paying attention to it from a nursing perspective or what, but every time I would bolus myself with morphine, I would get super dizzy. So I was having like a reaction to the morphine. Once they stopped that and I quit using it, I started, the dizziness really started to go away, which was such a blessing because I was, I really didn't have a lot of pain, I can't say. I, I just think that the, the dizziness and the nausea was what got me the most. Um, you do have, um, you have soreness where your incisions are, but now I can't tell you that I could feel exactly where they were. I just had a generalized soreness around my belly, almost as if I had done a whole bunch of crunches or something. And then, um, yeah, I had a lot of gas pain, and I think that's the most that that's the biggest thing that people complain about is the gas pain because it kind of settles and weird. Like mine settled up in my shoulders, which was. Uh, you know, really uncomfortable. You just like, you just wanted it out of there. And every time I'd move, I'd burp or, you know, whatever. So the gas was, you, I was getting rid of it, but it, it's just kind of uncomfortable. I can't say that it's like so much pain that you just lay there in agony. It's just, you just know you've been through something major and you're uncomfortable. Um, I pretty much survived on Tylenol. I, I had them stop the morphine pretty quickly after surgery, and they were bringing me liquid Tylenol kind of every so many hours to kind of take the edge off the pain. Um, but other than that, I really wasn't getting anything aside from a lot of IV um, nausea medicine because nausea was a big deal. Um, when I went home, they sent me home with liquid Lortab. Now, I went home the very next day. My surgery, I went in for surgery at like 1.30, and I went home the next day at like three something. So it was like literally almost a 24 hour turnaround before I went home. Um, the ride, the car ride home was painful. Um, in hindsight, I wish I had stayed an extra day in the hospital because I think the, the car ride home would have been a lot better. But um, once I got home, I was much more comfortable there. You know, um, I know a lot of people have said they couldn't really lay down in their bed. They had to sleep in a chair. I didn't have that problem. I just laid in bed and I mean it hurt to sit up and to get up you know because you're using all your ab muscles but I just did it I don't know I, I maybe I have a higher pain tolerance than some people but it really didn't seem to bother me that bad um, I was given liquid lower tab uh, when I came home and it was so sweet tasting and I was still having so much nausea that I couldn't do that I was like I just can't I, I can't do it so I survived on children's chewable Tylenol. I was taking that about every four hours, um, and I just kind of set my routine by that. I would take it, wait about a half hour, get up, walk, because walking is the best thing you can do after your surgery. Um, it helps the gas, it helps your pain, you get stronger, you recover quicker. So walking, 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 even when you don't feel like it, it's really important. So I would walk, I would come home, and I would get in whatever vitamins or liquids or whatever I needed to and then I would sleep and about the time I would wake up is when the pain would kind of be coming back and I would do it all over again and that was just kind of how it went the first few days for me I would say by the end of the first week I felt pretty much back to normal um, I was still having soreness and uh, my incisional soreness lasted for quite a while like you could feel where your incisions were for I don't know I bet I could still feel them a couple months out, just like way deep inside, still healing. Um, but it gets better every single day, and as long as you get up and move, it really starts to get better. I mean, every time I'd stand up, I was like getting rid of gas. Like I would burp. I was burping all the time. My mom thought it was so funny. She stayed with me like the first week, and she was just like, you just burping, burping, burping. I'm like, I'm getting rid of all that gas. But like every time you do it, like you could feel like it would relieve some pressure inside your chest or whatever. So, uh, you know, it, the, I think the walking is the big key to get rid of that gas pain. Um, so yeah, pretty much children's chewable Tylenol did it for me. And um, you just get through it. I don't know. I mean, I think anytime you go into surgery, you're going to anticipate you're going to be in pain to some extent. It's going to be uncomfortable. Um, I didn't 
exactly know what to think, and I was really scared of how much it was going to hurt, and I was pleasantly surprised that the car ride home was the only thing that really, like, I was in tears, because every little bump, like, I could feel my intestines, like, bouncing, and it felt like it was pulling in all these weird places, so that was really, really, really uncomfortable. Um, the on cue pain ball, I didn't really like that thing, because you have to carry it around your neck. Uh, so you're stuck with this thing for like the first three days and you got to shower with it I mean, it is just a pain in the butt So I had to have somebody in the shower with me like holding the little bag and you have to wash around all the stuff And I, it was just a real hassle um, But I didn't have um, for me. I didn't have staples or anything My doctor just used like the Dermabond glue and some Steri strips on all of my incisions So I didn't have any you no know, like stitches to have taken out or you know just really nothing um, and everything healed up really easily and no no issues with anything so um, I, I mean for those of you who are pre-op and you're getting ready to have the surgery done I just don't over don't psych yourself out about it I mean it's a big deal because it's a big surgery but it's not something that you're not going to be able to handle they're gonna as long as you are communicating with the staff of uh, you know, I'm in pain or I'm really nauseous. If you keep communicating with them, then they're going to do all they can to, to help you. And um, sometimes some medicine just doesn't work for you. I mean, I should have probably said, you know, this morphine is really not working for me. I want something different. And more than likely, they would have gotten me a different kind of pain medicine. But I didn't feel like I really needed it either. Um, the one thing I can say is with the nausea medicine, <laughs> make sure they time it better than what happened for me. Um, I was like, I had been given a dose the next morning and the next day you have to go do um, a swallow study like an upper GI only it's a little bit different kind of contrast liquid they use and um, it makes me, it made me really, really sick to my stomach. But I was like in between times of being able to have nausea medication. So I had been given it and this, I think I could have it every four hours. So I had that study done at like the two hour mark. So when I got back, I had to wait two more hours before I could get any more nausea medicine. And I was so sick to my stomach after that. So um, just a heads up, you might want to ask them that morning, like when, it, what time is my swallow thing going to be? And try to like, make sure you get your nausea medicine before you go do that or just a little bit before you go do that not in the middle like I did so um, I don't think there's really anything else that I know I've heard other people talk about the pain after surgery and how how excruciating it was and how miserable it was I just didn't have that experience with it um, and I I think that probably has somewhat to do with your surgeon too and how much they're manipulating your you know your abdominal wall and your intestines and everything else um, that's another reason why I feel like it's really important that you have a really good surgeon um, for this surgery so um, yeah I mean I guess that's really all that the only advice I have for anybody who's curious about what it's like after surgery I can't say that it's uh, the most painful thing I've ever experienced because it's not but it was um, I was uncomfortable for a few days uh, the good thing is, is that your body heals really fast. I mean, within a, within three days, you're going to feel so much better. And within a week, you're going to almost feel like back to normal. And definitely within two weeks, you're going to be fine. Um, I think for me, like after between one week and two weeks, it was just gaining more strength. I was just, you know, you get, you just kind of tire out really quickly. And I, a lot of that's just from anesthesia and stuff. So um, by two weeks, I was like, I was good to go. I mean, I was back doing pretty much everything that I did before. Um with the exception of swimming just because of the incisions but everything else I could do I mean I was clear to lift weights and go to the gym and do what I mean pretty much whatever I wanted to do I could do so um, anyway hopefully that helps somebody I don't know I feel like um, that's just kind of a vague thing that everybody's gonna have a little bit different story and tell you what it's like after surgery um, by far the swallow study for me the day after was the worst part of the whole thing uh, the taste of that stuff is just, I, I mean, I, I can't even try to sugarcoat it. It's just not pleasant, but you have to do it, and there's a good reason why you're doing it, but um, it's just something you got to get. Th like, I was out in the hallway in the water fountain, like, rinsing my mouth over and over and over and over, and that taste just would not go away. It was horrible. Just horrible. I mean, you, if you've had an upper GI 
The barium is nothing compared to that gastrographin they're going to give you. Ugh, it's bad. Hi. My buddy's back. What are you doing? <laughs> My animals are so funny. So anyway, um, this week, yesterday I spent my whole day doing chores, uh, grocery shopping, cleaning the house. We're having company this weekend. Uh, my husband plays in the handbell choir at our church, and they're doing a performance. I call it a show. He gets mad. I call it a show. But um, anyway, my mom is coming down to see it, and his parents and his brother and his grandma are all coming. And it just so happens that Monday is uh, my husband's mom's birthday. So we're kind of doing like um, a barbecue at our house after church. So we're going to have um, a little birthday party for his mom. And uh, so I've, we've kind of been trying to get the house ready. And um, we're, it's supposed to be nice out. So we're going to do it outside on the patio, which is why I've been out all morning working in the yard. Um, look at you. He just butts his way in. You just butted your way in. Didn't you? Uh, so, so that's why I've been busy. Uh, today I actually, my chores, it's more chores. I have, I've just, ha I'm not going to have time to work out yesterday or today. Um, today I, it was mowing the grass. It's going to rain. So I wanted to get up and get that done, which I did. Um, the weed whip pissed me off and there's no, there's like the cord for it ran out. So I didn't even get to finish doing it. And I was like, this sucks. But, um, patio looks great. It's going to rain, so by tomorrow it's going to look like crap again. And Sunday I'm going to get to sweep it all over again, but that's all right. Um, we were supposed to go to Six Flags tomorrow. I had my my reward to myself for losing 200 pounds was going to Six Flags. And we had scheduled that for tomorrow. Yeah, there's like a 90% chance of rain tomorrow. Right. Anytime I want to do anything, it freaking rains. 5K day, rain. Supposed to rain Saturday for Six Flags Day. Supposed to rain Sunday for Barbecue Day. I mean, can I just not get a break here? Give me a nice day to do something I want to do, for real. Um, so anyway, uh, we got all these people coming, and um, I'm actually um, baking my mother-in-law birthday cake today. I did that for my mom for her birthday. That was the big secret I didn't couldn't talk about because I was afraid she was going to watch my video. But um, I don't think my mother-in-law watches my videos, so uh, she won't know about it. But even if she did, oh well. Uh, my mom loved that I made her birthday cake. She's like, so you should do this for your mother-in-law. And I was like, okay. So I'm making another birthday cake on yet again another Friday. <laughs> Friday and a f Friday after. Um I actually had a really good time making my mom's cake, so I'm really looking forward to this today, and I think I'm going to, like, the more and more that I do it, I think I'm going to get better and better at it. Um, my mom was, like, super impressed with me because I haven't actually done a cake, like, ever, I don't think. Uh, she, I watched her do a bunch growing up because she used to make our birthday cakes all the time, and my mom was really good. She'd taken those Wilton classes on how to cake decorate and all that stuff, and she was really good at it, so... I just watched her a lot, and apparently I picked up picked it up pretty easily because I just, I don't know. I, she was so impressed with it. So, And so was all the rest of my family. They were like, I didn't know you can make cakes like that. And I was like, I didn't either. <laughs> um, the, the downside for me, of course, is that these are like the full-on really sugary cakes. So it's kind of a challenge uh, making them and all of the icing that goes on them and everything because it's, you know, it's... I, I miss that taste, and I also know it's so much better if I try to stay away from it. Um, I did have a small piece of my mom's birthday cake, a really small piece, and I didn't even finish it because it was so rich that I was like, I'm going to get so sick on this. So I, you know, I just had a few bites of it, but um, I guess in a way it's good when you make stuff like that because you know you can't have it and you just kind of avoid it. If it was a sugar-free cake, I would have probably gotten into it, so... Um, much better, I think, that I don't. But anyway, I hope that she's really excited about <clears throat> her birthday cake and that we're kind of throwing her a little birthday party at our house. You never know with her. She's kind of like, sometimes she gets really excited about stuff and sometimes she just really doesn't. So, who knows? 
I guess I prepare myself for her to not get excited. Um, so today I, it, there's a possibility that I could hear about this job, um, but it's already 1030 and I'm going to assume that I'm not going to hear her because she usually calls me in the morning. So she told me when I talked to her early in the week that it would be either today or early next week that I would hear from her. She's actually away on business right now, so um, I, I'm guessing it's relatively unlikely that I'm going to hear today, which is such a disappointment. I just want to know, like, either I get this job or I don't. I think it's really important that I, um, I don't know, just to know, because if, if, it, if I'm not going to get it, I need to you know, really get after looking for different stuff, which I, I've still been applying, but just at a much lower rate because I keep thinking I'm going to get this job. Um, but I don't, also, I'm not overly confident now that I know that they're interviewing all these other people. So who knows? Um, for the weekend, I don't know what we're going to do tomorrow now that it's going to rain. Um, I'm going to try to talk my husband into doing something, um, just to kind of celebrate um, my accomplishment, I guess, because I feel like, um, I just feel like I want to reward myself with something that means something to me or that would be fun for me. And I don't want it to be just shopping for clothes because I have to do that anyway. I want it to be something different than that. So hopefully we can still find something to do this weekend uh, just to kind of, celebrate because it's a big deal right losing 205 pounds it's kind of a big deal we went and had our church pictures done Wednesday night and um, the lady was asking us how long we'd been married and we said a year and a half and she's like oh so probably the last like professional pictures you had was wedding pictures and we said yeah and I said I don't really look anything like I do in my wedding pictures so um, it's kind of neat to, to see new pictures of us. And she's like, what, did you have plastic surgery or something? And I was like, no, I had surgery, but different kind. So I was telling her I had weight loss surgery. And, well, she asked how much I had lost. And I told her. And she's like, well, you're like half the person you were. I'm like, yeah, pretty much. And she's just like, well, we needed to do glamour shots on you. And I was like, glamour shots? Do they even still do glamour shots? I, I remember glamour shots were like the thing when I was in junior high school. Like all the girls went and got glamour shots done and everybody looked so ridiculous and fake and horrible and like like a three pounds of makeup on and I just thought, do they even still do glamour shots? It's weird. But uh, anyway, our pictures came out cute so we get a complimentary one so I'll show it to you guys when it comes in. Um, and I guess that's it. Obviously nothing too major but I wanted to try to touch base on that. Um, the pain question I got because I think it's just easier to respond in video form versus um, uh, typing all that out. And oh, the other thing I I have my hat on today. I got this hat. If you guys remember, I got this hat when I went to my first ball game last year. Um, for the first game I had been to in like I don't know, maybe five, six years, something like that. Look at how big it is. I can seriously put it over my ears. That's ridiculous. It's a this is a women's ball cap in a size medium. I have I can put my whole hand <laughs> up inside here. When I bought it, it fit fine. And I had tried on the small and I thought, oh the small's just a little snug. I don't think I want the small. I wish I had bought the small. <laughs> my head apparently shrunk in in losing two hundred pounds, apparently your head shrinks too. I don't know if anybody else has ever had this issue. It's a fitted hat, too, so it's not like, I mean, it doesn't have, like, the snaps in the back. It's just a fitted one size deal. I would take it off and show you that, except that my hair looks crazy, so I'm not going to. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, so I, w I wanted to tell you guys, if you have baseball hats or you like baseball hats pre-surgery, they might not fit later because my head seriously shrunk, and I had a little head to begin with. I actually have a, several of my baseball caps that I have are youth because that's what fits me better. Even over women's, the women's are usually too big, and the youth caps is what you, I usually wear because my head is so little. Yeah. I got a tiny head. Have you guys ever seen that commercial where there's that guy that has the little head? I got a tiny head? I don't know. I just thought about that. 
Okay, that's it for me. I hope you guys have a really wonderful weekend. Um, hopefully the weather is better for you than it's going to be for us because it's going to rain all day tomorrow. Um, anybody have any suggestions of things I could do for celebration of 200 pounds gone? I'm open to those. <coughs> We're kind of talking about maybe going to this place called Fast Eddie's, which I've talked about, and I've actually shot a video from there before. Um, but that can be relatively expensive, and if I still want to go to Six Flags anyway later, then I would feel kind of bad for doing that. So, I don't know. I just want something fun to do. I'm open to suggestions, guys. Please help. Um... I guess that's it. I'm glad all of you made it home safe and sound from Vegas. It sounds like you guys had a fabulous time, and I'm super jealous, and next year I have to be there. Um, that's all there is to it. So, yeah, have a great weekend. Bye, guys.